Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. We're going to duplicate some tabs like we do every time to put reports in by right clicking the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it once again. Back to the tab to the middle, the reports on the left hand side. Let's open up one of the favorites, that being of course the balance sheet report. Go to the tab to the right and reports on the left side again, this time the other favorite, the profit and the loss. Let's close the hamburger, scroll up top and change that range from 010123 to 123123, that's a 5, I want a 3. Okay, and then we'll tap to the middle tab, close up the hamburger and change the range to the same. 0101232, 123123, why do I want a 5 there? Run it. Okay, tabbing to the left in prior presentations, we've been talking about the tracking of the mileage down here. If in the accounting view, it's gonna be located in the mileage on the left hand side and the business view, it's gonna be under the, that app area but remember that the actual app itself is basically on the phone and this mileage tab will be in your quickbooks file whether you connect the app or not if you connect the app it'll track your miles basically for you and you can pull that into your quickbooks and then allocate between business and personal if not i'll skip this item right here you can manly manually enter the miles as you are uh, as you are making trips and whatnot. So that's what we will do now. Now note, remember that as we enter the mileage information over here, it's not gonna basically change the financial statements. We, we're tracking the financial statements most likely on the income statement, for example, as we actually pay them using the actual method, if you think about it from tax standpoint. And that's just what's gonna happen because of course you're gonna be paying them out of the checking account. The mileage method over here, tracking it, will give us hopefully the information necessary for taxes to make the adjustment at the end of the year. So let's do the data input and then we can talk about how we might use that at the end of the year and what that adjustment might uh, look like. So let's go back to the first tab. Now you can also imagine using this mileage tab here for other reasons as well. It could be useful if you're doing your QuickBooks for personal purposes to track your personal miles and see where you've been going and whatnot and logging uh, that information and trying to budget possibly for you know how much driving time you're going to have and so on uh, and you also might try to track your miles in here if you're trying to reimburse people in that kind of system as well and and you might say oh, i'm going to try to reimburse people based on a standard rate or something like this and this can help you kind of track the miles but really it's geared towards it's set up to and designed for this the sole proprietor type of business trying to track the miles for uh, their business. So we looked at the basic outline in a prior presentation. We got the trips up top. We've got the uh, import trip, download trips, manage favorite location and manage rules. It's going to give you a quick summary of the information that's had the data input as you're actually entering trips. Then it's going to put them into unreviewed for those that you have not allocated to business and personal and then the business, the personal and all of them. Obviously, the business ones are the ones that are going to give you the little calculation up top for the possible tax benefits uh, related to it. All right, so let's hit the drop down up top and let's go into first managing the vehicles. So we got to have the vehicles on the books, of course. So we can put in, I just put a generic couple vehicles in place. And so this one is the vehicle. I have it in here for 2023, uh, the current year, but you can see that you have the data for prior years as well. I'm going to say the vehicle uh, car. It's going to, I'm going to put the make and model of the vehicle, which is useful information because you might need it to give to your tax professional because they might need that information to populate the vehicle when they first start doing whatever method they're going to use on the taxes so that's information that you want to have you know available so you probably want more than just you know a ford you want the whole breakout of the make and model uh, possibly and then the vehicle year i put in here and then you own this vehicle or you lease the vehicle i'm going to assume that we own the vehicle and date you bought the vehicle so i'll just put a date prior to the current year that we are in and the date that it was placed in service so i put something prior to the year that we are in 
And then down here, we've got some useful information. How do you want uh, to re record mileage for 2023? So first it says by recording odometer reading, and then it says uh, by entering the total miles. Now I put up top the odometer reading because what I'd like to do is basically use this as a place where I can have my odometer reading, meaning at the beginning and end of the year, it'd be useful to, to track what your odometer is and the difference between the beginning and ending of the year on the odometer is how many miles you drove total for that year, both business and personal. Now, if you turn on like the mileage tracking app in QuickBooks, then maybe you could track basically everywhere you drive, right? And then, and then all the trips that you have right here should add up to the difference between your odometer readings from the beginning to the end of the year. But that kind of gives you that double check that that uh, is indeed the case. If you're not tracking everywhere you drive, every place you go, but you're just trying to track your business miles, it can give you a useful kind of guideline to see if you think you picked up the, the proper business miles, right? Because you'll have the business miles will be the actual miles that you have tracked. And the difference between the odometer readings are going to be the the at the total miles that you have that you have gone right you might not be tracking every place that you drove in that case but possibly just trying to track the business side of things so uh in some way shape or form it's useful to have the odometer reading at the beginning and the end of the year now if i go back you can add a new vehicle i added another one uh, a truck here so i put it the, the make and model once again I own the vehicle, date, place, and service. Notice if this one was now the primary item, I can tag it over as the primary. So now I've got the, uh, this one. Hold on a second. Did it do it? Let me go 